friends and family. So a lot of you have been asking me what kind of gear I'm going to be taking on my upcoming Appalachian Trail through hike. And so today I'm going to give you the video showing you all of the stuff that I'm going to be carrying with me for 2,190 miles as I hike through 14 states going from Georgia all the way up to Maine. So we're going to do things a little bit different than some people do on their gear videos. And I'm going to kind of do an unpacking of my backpack so you can see not only what stuff I'm taking, but also how it is that it fits on me and where I'm going to be carrying it and how it all goes together. I got a couple of items laid out on the table here that we're going to begin with. And first are these very important pieces of gear called trekking poles. Now, I chose to use the Lakey Cork Light trekking pole. They're aluminum shafts, and they're guaranteed for life. So I thought that was probably pretty important, considering the abuse that they're going to go through, going up and down every mountain that uh, the trailblazers could find in, throughout all 14 states. So anyway, I've got my pair of trekking poles here, and these have been amazing so far. Now, I'm not going to do a review on any of the gear uh, today in this video. I'm planning on doing reviews out on the trail as I actually go through using the products. But you'll see I marked my trekking poles with some green duct tape. So that serves two purposes. One, when we're in a shelter or crowded place, I can find my trekking poles. They'll be different than everybody else's. Plus, I've got a little bit of uh, duct tape, so if I need to make a repair, I've got it available. So there's my trekking poles. Stand those up behind me. The next thing that some of you may be wondering is, how are you going to find your way? What are you going to, going to use as a guide? And so right here I have a copy of the 2017 Appalachian Trail uh, Guide by David A. Wall Miller. And in this guide, I'll, I'll do a review later so you can see more about, uh, about it and how it works. But in this guide is an elevation profile of the trail. It's got mileage markers. It's got water sources marked out. So pretty much everything that you need to know is contained in this guide. And you at home, you viewers, if you don't have one of these, you can order one on Amazon. I think they're about $13. But anyway, then you can follow along with me uh, as I go through my journey and see where I'm at. There's maps of towns and, and restaurants and hotels listed in here with phone numbers. So these are very valuable to a thru-hiker. So there's my guide, and I'll cut it down into smaller sections and only take a few pages with me, maybe a third of the book at a time, and have Teresa mail me the rest when I get through the, the first section and get into the next section. Here are my very important Oakley sunglasses. And these are polarized lenses, uh, very valuable for me. And I'm going to go ahead and take this hard case because the glasses are so important for me to be able to have good contrast that I want them to be protected. So I'm taking the hard case. I'll be wearing the glasses most of the time, but the case will be available to protect them. So here's my backpack, and I'll turn sideways and show you. I'll even turn around and show you what my pack looks like. This is an Osprey Exos 58 backpack. And now I'll take this pack off and begin to show you the different parts and some of the compartments and what all is contained within them. All right, well, let's look at the front. First of all, I've got a Z-Pax phone case here that's waterproof, and I'll keep my cell phone in this when the weather's tough, uh, weather's raining or whatever, and that'll protect my cell phone, and it'll stay in this little pouch uh, right here. Here I have something that a lot of you are going to be wondering about, and this is a spot locator device. Now this spot device will allow me to do several things. It allows me to push a button and check in with all of you, leaving uh, text messages that, hey, life is good, I'm okay, and everything is going fine. It also has an emergency SOS locator button. I can press that button if the worst case scenario happens, and the emergency responders will know where I'm at, and they will be dispatched to come to help me. So the cavalry will come a running if I push that SOS button. Plus it sends a, a locator uh, beacon every 30 minutes so you can follow along on my Facebook page and see right where I'm at at any given time. And then at night I'll shut it off which says that I'm okay and the next morning power it on and lets everybody know hey 
I'm okay. So there's my spot device. I've got some reading glasses, super lightweight, and they're in a little foam case. But that allows me to read my AT guide, uh, hopefully, without too much trouble. And I've got some earbuds, just so I can listen to podcasts or, or books, and I can uh, listen to my Bible as, we're, as I'm walking along. So I'm excited uh, about that. Down here in my Osprey backpack, I've got some side hip belt pockets. And inside these, I've got miscellaneous items, a little trail wallet to keep cash and credit card in. I've uh, got some chewing gum. I love my ice cube uh, icebreaker gum, so i got a bag of that, and that pocket's empty. On this side, I've got some dental floss, just your run-of-the-mill dental floss. A little bottle to keep some pills in, pain pills or Tylenol or, or ibuprofen or, or whatever you may need. But it keeps them dry and out of the rain. I've got a small pocket knife. This is just an SOG little lock blade. Very lightweight though. Uh, pocket knife, so I'll be taking along that small pocket knife. Uh, I've got a stick pick for my camera mount that I'll be recording my journey on my cell phone and using this to mount the camera uh, to my trekking poles as I walk along. The rest of the mount is actually in use right now on the tripod. Chapstick and an energy drink is all I have in these pockets right here. So that's, uh, that's those pockets. I've got a bandana here just for sweat or keeping, uh, uh, keeping hair and anything out of, the, out of my eyes. On the back of my pack, you'll see right now I've got some camp shoes. Now these are ultra lightweight. I don't know what they're called or who makes them. We got them at Walmart. They were the lightest thing I could possibly find that slips on easily and can be worn in camp at night when your feet are tired and hurting and your shoes are wet and muddy. You can slip these on. These weigh 14 ounces, so it's quite a weight penalty. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these, but I'm going to take them for sure in the beginning. And then I've got the luxury of when Teresa leaves, she can take them with her if I don't want them any longer. This meshy part of the back of my pack, I've got several things uh, stuffed in there. One, I've got some cold weather gear. So I've got a smart wool buff. can be used for lots of things. Ear protection over your whole head and face like a balaclava. But the smart wool doesn't smell. Uh, it dries super quick. I'm really excited about that buff. I've got some outdoor research wool gloves that have the touch pads on the fingers. Really excited about these gloves too. I love outdoor research's gear. Uh, kind of a mid-weight glove. And then I've got some waterproof mittens that go over the top of the gloves if it's cold and raining. That'll keep my gloves dry and my hands a whole lot warmer. So I've got those. This is a Thermarest Z seat, just something comfortable to sit on. Uh, it's waterproof and insulates you from the ground. You can kneel on it. Uh, you can use it as a windbreak when you're cooking. You can set it up to stop the wind. So, yep, Thermarest Z seat. Here I've got my water filter, which is a Sawyer Squeeze. It's the full size when everybody's talking about this in their gear review, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but when you get water from the streams or springs, it's a good idea to go ahead and filter it also, just to keep uh, Giardia or any other parasites down. So I'll use this water filter and get water from natural sources along the way. And here are a couple of uh, folded up water bags that I can use to fill with dirty water and then filter from the bags into everyone's bottle of choice. Smart water bottles, two of them. Now, as you might have heard, the southeast is in a bit of a drought right now. Georgia's experiencing an extreme drought, so some of the water sources aren't flowing. And so I'm, cho I'm choosing to begin with two liter bottles, two one liter bottles, uh, so I can carry more water if I need to, depending on uh, the condition of the springs that I'm going to be coming up to, because you certainly don't want to be running low on water. So I'll set those off to the side. I've got a, a small little little towel from, uh, from REI, weighs like one ounce, clipped on the outside of my pack. I registered my start date with the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. This is a tag that I got in the mail that says that I'm registered and good to go, so that'll be kind of a, a keepsake and a little uh, memento. 
I have a Z-Pax rain cover for my pack because the Osprey pack is not waterproof, so I need to cover it when it's raining so that the pack doesn't absorb water and get heavier. So I'm bringing along this ultra lightweight, very thin uh, Cuban fiber rain cover for my pack. That'll keep everything dry. I think that's it for the outside. So now we'll unbuckle and open up my pack and I'll show you what's on the inside. So the first thing that I've got is my tent. Now believe it or not, for those of you that have some camping and backpacking experience, this is a two-person tent. This is a Z-Pax duplex tent made out of Cuban fiber, one of the lightest materials on earth, waterproof and windproof. You use your trekking poles to set it up. And this right now with the stakes weighs one pound and six ounces. One pound and six ounces. That's a two-person tent, two doors and two vestibules. It's an awesome shelter, ultra lightweight, very expensive, but when you're walking this far as you have to on a through hike, it's worth the investment. So Teresa and I chose to go ahead and invest in this uh, great shelter, so we'll both stay in this at the beginning, and then I'll stay in this alone after she, uh, after she leaves. So there's my shelter. Next thing is something that's very important, and this is my potty set. So I've got a roll of toilet paper inside a dry sack right here. And you may be wondering, what's this red thing here attached to it? That's my trowel. When you're in the woods, they want you to, we have to go number two, you've got to get off the trail uh, 200 feet and dig a hole, do your business in the hole, and then cover it back up. They call it a cat hole. Well, you need something to dig with. And so the trowels that are available are, are A, they're expensive, and B, they might be kind of heavy. So this is a snow stake. I think it's an MSR but it's a snow stake for a tent. It's super lightweight. This is going to be my trowel. So I dig my holes with this. Toilet paper's right there. It'll stay dry and waterproof. All right, next I've got some frog tog rain pants. Nothing fancy, ultra lightweight. But at the beginning of the trail, I'm going to take the pants because there'll be another layer of warmth, not just for rain protection, but wind and cold also. There may be days when I'm wearing these just over my shorts or whatever. So those are the pants that I'm going to be taking. And then inside my pack, I'll show you later, is another Z-Pack side, and this is a pack liner. Now you'll see it's unrolling because this is waterproof. So not only will I have some rain protection on the outside of my backpack, but also on the inside. So everything that needs to stay dry uh, will be inside this Z-Pax pack liner. And using garbage bags and all that, that all works fine. But I went ahead and made the decision to go ahead and buy one that uh, seals and rolls down and buckles. It's lighter than a garbage bag. And so we went ahead and did it. This right here is my uh, personal item kit. It's got everything from my battery charger for my phone, which is an Anchor 10,000 milliamp uh, battery charger, to my headlamp. Uh, I've got my glasses case. I've got a first aid kit in here, Band-Aids, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, um, some KT tape for blister protection, but that's about it. And then I've got a small repair kit with some Cuban fiber tape and things in there. Otherwise, toothbrush, um, toothpaste, some uh, personal items like that. And that's what's all contained in this one very lightweight, breathable, uh, breathable bag. That's my personal items. Here is my food bag. Now it's got a little bit of food in it right now, but not much. Uh, this is a Cuban fiber bear bag kit. So inside here, I have a rope to be able to throw over a tree limb and hang my food at night to keep it away from mainly mice or raccoons, but also the event uh, a black bear would want to come and, and try to get my food. Well, no way, Jose. We're going to keep that from you by hanging in a tree if we have to. So this is my food bag, and I can fit up to about five days' worth of food in this uh, if I need to. It unrolls and seals down. It's also waterproof and, uh, and scent-proof. Here's my cook kit, very minimalistic. I'm gonna lay, lay my pack down. This cook kit's very minimalistic. This is a Snow Peak 700, a Trek 700. It's a titanium little pot. It's mainly a big mug is really what it is, but the Snow Peak version has uh, markings in the side so you can see how much water you're putting in it. 
very, uh, very handy when you're out there on the trail because you don't have a measuring cup. So this is the pot that I will boil water in. I've got a couple pieces of aluminum foil. Those serve as my lid. The lid that came with this was awful heavy. So I got rid of the lid and I'm just using aluminum foil. Mini Bic lighter to light it. Right now I have a MSR fuel canister for my stove. This is called a Hot Lips. It's made by Snow Peak and you snap it on the side of your mug and then you can drink hot coffee and not burn your lips. So highly recommend that for you coffee drinkers out there. And then inside the pot, the very bottom, is my stove. And those of you that don't know much about backpacking, believe it or not, this is a stove. A lot smaller than your Kenmore there in your kitchen. <laughs> this is a one burner uh, liquid fuel canister stove. So what you do is you thread this stove onto the top of your fuel bottle. Then you set your pot on top of that. Whoops. Unfold the three legs there, and there you go. That's how I boil water to add the hot water to my dehydrated food to cook at night. So there's my whole cook system right there. With a brand new fuel bottle, this cook system weighs less than one pound. Ultra lightweight. I don't want to go out there and not have some hot food, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to cooking, some, cooking some meals. So there's my cook kit. Again, very minimalistic. My theory with all of this gear is trying to be very conscious of weight. I'm not trying to go ultralight. I'm choosing some comfort uh, on over ultralight weight, but I'm trying to be very conscious of everything and try not to take anything extra. This is my down coat, very important for backpackers. It's nothing special, it's just an REI co-op uh, down hoodie, but boy, very warm especially when you consider the light weight. So highly recommend these. They went on sale uh, in the fall, and I think I got this for like $70. You can spend three times that much or four times that much on extra expensive down coats. So right now, this one's working great. Uh, very thankful for, for my down coat. This I use when I'm inside my tent. This might be kind of gross to some of you, but when it's uh, cold out and you're snuggled down your sleeping bag and you have to go to the bathroom, the last thing you want to do is unzip and put your shoes on and go out into the woods and go to the bathroom. So this is an ultralight little plastic container. And for you guys out there, we can go number one in this. You can go to the bathroom real quick and not even have to really unzip your sleeping bag much. So I carry this thing. It weighs uh, one, one ounce or so. Well worth the wait, though, on those chilly nights when you don't want to get out of your nice, warm sleeping bag. This is the, my clothing bag uh, right here. Let me go ahead and see. All right, two more items. I have a Thermarest uh, Neo Air X-Therm sleeping pad. This thing weighs less than a pound and it blows up to two inches or two and a half inches thick. It's got a real high warmth value to it. It keeps your body heat in. I love this sleeping pad. It's not the lightest on the market, but it's very close. But it's super warm and comfortable. I sleep great when I'm, when I'm uh, using my, my Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm sleeping pad. Finally, here at the bottom of my pack, is my sleeping bag. Now this, I'll go ahead and open it up. This is a Z-Packs, keeping with the theme of ultra light and, and uh, very high quality. This is a Z-Pack sleeping bag. And this sleeping bag is rated for 20 degrees. It's made of down. Comes in another Cuban fiber stuff sack. But uh, this sleeping bag is absolutely incredible. It's basically a quilt, a top quilt, that has a zipper on the bottom, and if you need it, you can zip it up and snuggle down in it and stay very warm. So this is what I'm trusting uh, my warmth and comfort to out there on the trail, my Z-Packs 20 degree down sleeping bag. Love this thing, by the way. Love it so far. Very happy to have it. Here I have an uh, C to Summit Aeros pillow. This is just a little inflatable pillow. I uh, really like to have my head propped up, but I don't want to rely on my down coat as an option because uh, if it's really cold, I can wear my down coat. This thing, for the weight, uh, it's worth it for me. This is my luxury item, uh, if you will. This is my, my comfy pillow. Getting good sleep is very important to me. So anyway, there's my pillow. 
that I'll sleep with. Now I'll show you my clothing real quick. Pretty minimalistic. I'm going to set my backpack down because I'm done with it. But here is my Osprey Exos 58. Love this pack. I don't even know that it's there. It's an ultralight pack. It's not the lightest, but very comfortable and hauls 30 pounds, uh, a little over 30 pounds, very comfortably. So I'm uh, uh, really digging my, my pack so far. Here's my clothing real quickly. I'll show you this, and uh, we will go from there. Darn Tough Socks. You'll hear everybody on these videos talk about Darn Toughs. They are my favorite sock by far. Made in America, made in Vermont, in fact. Lifetime guarantee. Wouldn't hike in anything else. Uh, although I hear there's another brand out there that's kind of an up-and-comer that I'm anxious to try out. But I uh, love these Darn Tough Socks. So I'll be hiking in those socks. Hiking in an Under Armour uh, breathable tech t-shirt. And most of the time, hiking in a pair of Nike running shorts. That's the majority of the time this is what I'll be wearing. Right here. I've got a Patagonia Capoline uh, Thermal Weight top. It's, it's a base layer technically, but it fits over my uh, t-shirt well. It breathes well, but it also has great warmth. Uh, warmth to weight ratio especially. So if it's chilly out or breezy, I can wear my little Capoline uh, Patagonia base layer there. I got another pair of Darn Tough socks. These are a little longer and so I will sleep uh, in these, but they're also available if I need them to hike in. I've got a fleece fleece beanie to sleep in. This is for around camp. I won't hike in this. That way it doesn't get wet from sweat and it'll be dry when I get to camp. And if it's chilly out, I've got this and I'll also sleep in it on those chilly nights. I've got a pair of Russell breathable uh, quick dry underwear to wear with my pants. With the Nike, the Nike running shorts, no underwear, totally commando, uh, more breathability, hopefully less chafing. So another pair of darn tough socks, two to hike in, one to sleep in. The ones for hiking, I can rotate back and forth even throughout the day. If one gets wet, hang the other ones on the back of my pack and let them dry out. Well, that way I can wear hopefully mostly dry socks and fairly fresh socks. Those of you that have hiked much know there's nothing that feels quite so good as putting on a pair of clean dry socks. Uh, make your feet feel better. So again, two pair of Darn Tufts to hike in, one pair to sleep in. I've got another Under Armour Tech t-shirt. If I need to, I can swap back and forth. I heard uh, a fellow thru-hiker, former thru-hiker Bigfoot say one of the pieces of gear he wished he'd had was another t-shirt. For the weight, I'm going to bring it. I can always send it home, but I'm starting with two t-shirts. I've got a plain, regular old pair of Columbia zip-off quick dry pants. This is for in camp in the evening when it's chilly or hiking on the really, really chilly days, uh, windy days or whatever. I've got pants. The bottoms zip off so they turn into shorts. Uh, we'll keep these as long as I need to and then uh, decide what to do later, maybe in the summertime, send these home and just keep my running shorts. Every ounce matters. These, I don't remember the weight of these, but they're a little better than half a pound. So you better need them in order to carry them up and down all the mountains. Let's see what else. Oh, here's my sleep system. So I have a pair of cool, cold proof, merino wool base layer. So it's just merino wool long underwear, top and bottoms, and that's what I sleep in. Especially when it's chilly, but even when it's not. Wool, especially merino wool, is amazing. It keeps you cooler when it's hot, and it keeps you warm when it's cold. It's a miracle uh, fabric, but I love these things. Love this merino wool. Between these, my uh, fleece beanie, and my warm uh, wool socks, I can stay pretty warm inside my Z-Pack sleeping bag uh, at night. Very comfortable, and it's also very functional. The other nice thing about having a base layer like this is in the case of an emergency, if I got sopping wet, a huge cold front came, I can always wear these to hike in. So it's kind of like an emergency protection uh, layer for cold also. So I've got possibility for cold weather and sleep gear right here. I think that's all the gear that uh, 
that I need to mention. I'll do another video on my food and what kind of food I'll be eating, and I'll even show you when I'm in the field. So anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching. I hope that I covered all of the stuff that, that I am going to be taking. If you have any questions or comments, I would sure love to hear your suggestions for gear, what I might be missing, or what I need to uh, to get rid of, what I may not need to take with me. So some of you that have done this before, I look forward to your, uh, to your comments and suggestions. And to those of you that are just wondering what I'm taking, I hope I answered all your questions. If you have any other ones, please uh, comment below, and I will try to get back with you on, uh, on those comments. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited that we have the opportunity to do this whole adventure together. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It really helps us out. The more subscribers I get, the easier it is for other people to find my videos. Thanks again for watching, and ciao for now.